Hi. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? We're the book. We're the book, do- <laughs> we're the book doctors. <laughs> doctors. That's Mo. That's our dog Mo. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is Arielle. This is David. Yeah. She's my wife. He's my husband. Yeah. That works nice that way. So today we're going to be talking about why books get rejected. Yes. Yes. And so we were just doing this uh, um, panel, Pitchapalooza, in Montclair here, and we had a fantastic, um, amazing panelist and editor, um, Joelle. Agent. Agent. Oh, agent. She's Joelle yes, she's, Del Borgo, she's, former editor in chief of HarperCollins. And and at one point during the Pitchapalooza, she said, uh, <laughs> she she said books get rejected. And this was mostly fiction, for two reasons. One, the editor doesn't connect with the voice, and two, the editor doesn't doesn't connect with the character. And when we see people pitch their books, Excuse me, Mo. So, Mo, what are you doing, man? We see so so many times that they write these the queries that are and, and pitches that are so generic they sound like they're they're uh, you know from a book report and from a from a uh, a fairly dull high school student, uh, and then the character goes down to the shore and then the character does this and the character does that. It doesn't have a voice. There's no, like, something that scintillates, that shows what a beautiful writer this person is. And the other thing we see all the time in these pitches is that they barely even mention the main character, the hero of the whole story, for goodness sake. Uh, we have to fall in love with this person. Oftentimes, pitches get so, for, for fiction, get so tied up in the, the plot of, you know, this happens, then this happens, the plot-heavy pitch as opposed to making us fall in love with this this character that we're going to, if we're a reader, we're going to spend 20 hours of our life. If we're an agent or a publisher, we're going to spend two years of our life with this character. we we got to love that, that person. You have to show us why we need to love them. And for nonfiction, the mistakes that we see over and over again, uh, particularly for practical nonfiction, uh, is that we don't know why you're the person to write the book and we don't see specific examples of takeaways that we are going to get from this book. Actual, you know, bullet points that that give us the juice that makes us want to drink this book. Juices and yeah. drinking? That yeah. is good. So, and then wow. for narrative nonfiction follows more along the lines of fiction. That uh, if you're writing memoir, for example, we've got to have a real sense of who you are and what your journey is. Or for other kinds of narrative nonfiction, um, we need the plot, but we need who we're going to follow in in this journey. So those are our tips for today about rejection. Just actually one more, which is that we say to people all the time, everybody's looking for a reason to say no. So you've got to mine your, uh, your pitch, your proposal, your book for what will those reasons be and to fix them before you send your books out. And don't out. ever start a letter, dear agent. Don't ever do that. Yeah. This Joel actually specifically said, don't start your your query, dear agent. And don't misspell. People misspell her name all the time. Mm-hmm. Dear Arla Lee, dear Arli Lou. Like, you, if you can't get the person's name right, there seems to be a small chance that you're going to actually get the book right. And yes, David did just wake up. Uh, I did, okay. Why? That seems shaming to me. Why? You have your nightshirt on. People might be wondering why. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. You're right. All right. Have a good day, writer. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Say goodbye to Mo.